So more insanity from Kentucky. Um, yeah, there's just so much weird ass shit. People being forced to eat their own beards. Um, there's you know the the whole thing is really just fucked up. But here's um, there's a five year old kid that shot a two year old kid. There's just every goddamn day, every motherfucking day. There's something new. There's something different. You know. And uh, again, it's uh, Tr Trayton Joiner, a two-year-old Kentucky boy is killed by a train while walking with his dog. A two-year-old walking with his dog on the train tracks? Where the hell are his parents at? Two, year two years old. Two years old walking a dog. Two years old. Does he even know how to talk? He barely just learned to walk. We will wait to read this. Um, there's some other thing, Texas approves, uh, textbooks with Moses as founding father, so that's wonderful, right? You know, America, it was built by the slaves, right? The slaves are who actually built, uh, this, this country. Um, you know, you have, let's see what, you have Thomas Jefferson, he had slaves, George Washington, he had slaves, and then let's not forget Moses, right? He built the country. Get the fuck out of here. Um, Moses, do we even know that Moses even existed for 40 years? He was just sitting there, you know, walking around in the desert. Do we even know? But who gives a shit, right? Who cares? There's uh, plenty of evidence that the uh, the pilgrims were murdering and uh, chopping people's heads off. But you know, we ain't going to investigate. We ain't going to check this out. It doesn't even matter. Who cares? Who gives a fuck, right? Who gives a fuck? Conservatives are rewriting the textbooks. To fit their own fucking myopic worldview, right? Uh, if you think of uh, religion is uh, is easy because it, it requires you to not have to think about things. You don't have to think about things. So, two-year-old boy struck and killed on a train on Monday. Welcome to this dog in Christian County. Christian County would be home of Bell Hooks. Bell Hooks, who says that you know the we need to bring back black schools. She was going to a black school, and uh, they actually cared about her future, and they cared about, you know, uh, developing her into a strong leader, and um, and so she could succeed in this world. And, um, you know, when the whole society is against you, it, the stakes are higher. And so black teachers understood this. Um, but, I, you know, the, there's still oppression all around. There was, um, I remember the story of... Um, what is it uh, with the uh, TJ getting killed? The uh, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. And Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry showed that the uh, kids um, the in the black schools, the teacher, you know, she kind of like, you know, shrugged her shoulders to the uh, oppression. Uh, or not shrugged her shoulders. One did, but the other one kind of shrugged her shoulders to, you know, oppressing the kids. There was a textbook and little man didn't like the textbook and so he threw a fit about it and then eventually... Um, it was like, you know, you need to tell your kids what to do, and then they was like, well, you know, um, it, it, it's uh, kind of bullshit that we have to get shitty textbooks, hand-me-downs and stuff, and um, and so, you know, she understood, but there was one teacher that was being a real fucking asshole about it. You'll accept your book, and you'll like it, and you'll be happy with it, and shut your damn mouth. Well, we ain't going to change that in that type of way, in that type of thinking. You know, young people are, we, we create leaders out of them when they're five. They'll be incredible leaders by the time they're 18. We give them autonomy and independence and teach them democratic forms and functions, teach them to get along with each other, to tolerate different viewpoints, to get them to stand up for what they believe in, to defend what they believe, uh, you know, to teach democratic processes, to teach them that they have choices in their lives and that they have choices in their curriculum and what they want to study and what they want to do then we will see a better society we will see a better society and it would be a grand incredible society um so let's see the hopkinsville christian county is where this came from the coroner's office they said it's 70 miles northwest of nashville tennessee the police spokesman paul ray said the train engineer saw the dog first and then the child with the dog but was able to unable to stop in time the train had two locomotives pulling 106 empty coal cars and they says it's tragic you know situation our, our sympathies are with the family what the fuck is a two-year-old doing walking on the train tracks where were the parents at look where it's at middle america now it's a tragedy now it's just sad to see in upper class that we have and this happened 
and they attack him and them because they rap this way. But I'm glad because they feed me the fumes that I need to burn and to burn and I am whatever you say I am. Um, there's a story about a uniformed police officer walking into this guy's door because he had no trespassing written on the door. And he said that was his probable cause. He's getting harassed by the cops, being asked all these damn questions. If he lived there, and what's his identity, and all this other shit. And he learned that state police was originally formed to break the unions. Uh, also to catch the slaves and send them back to the plantation. I was taught at an early age that the state police force was originally formed to break the unions by any means necessary. A lot of people have been hassled by cops. So, you know, um, he also made the claim that racism is a bigger factor than classism. I say that's bullshit. I think classism is bigger than racism. Racism adds another lever, uh, level to it. Classism is bigger than racism. After I answered every question he had, I did venture a very polite question. Why are you here? Why didn't you knock? Well, you had a posted a no trespassing sign. See, he said in his experience, it usually meant that the house was in bank foreclosure, and he thought he saw someone walking by in the window, and he thought, well, no trespassing means come on in without knocking and give me the third degree, still in me. I thought it meant the opposite. Zeesh. Mm, the last thing, well, I guess I could just go ahead and get all this knocked out. Okay, fine. I'll do some economics. No, I'll do it later. Um, the Supreme Court ju justices question legality of Louisville laws. There is that lady who was pulling the kid through the school in Bullitt County. Um, and, uh, they got a tribunal and she got her job back because, you know, if you're a white woman, you're allowed to beat up on boys and that's acceptable. You know, she has a vagina. What is, what do you mean? She has a vagina. She's allowed to kick any boy's ass that she wants to. Of course that's, that's the case. She's allowed to be a Nazi. She's allowed to rob you. She's allowed to molest you. I know all this stuff. Because that's what Spalding University did to me. And that's acceptable. You know, that's that's acceptable. It's acceptable for the fucking the police to beat the shit out of you for walking to the fucking thing. It's acceptable for, um, you know, abusive parents to beat the fuck out of you 5,000 times to fucking sue you, to fuck you over in any way, you know, shape and possible. Any way, shape or form. And that's acceptable. That's, a, that's all okay. There is no outrage. It doesn't matter. Now, if that woman... You know, if that kid was to smack the woman, right, like on Dr. Phil, whoa, how dare you? You can't use violence against her. She can use violence against you. You can't use it against her. Get the fuck out of here, man. We need to learn equality and we need to learn justice. Kentucky Supreme Court justices question legality of Louisville laws. When Olivia Johnson's dog, Franklin, was confiscated after attacking another dog in 2011, Johnson ended up with more problems than just trying to save her pet. She became a convicted criminal. In 2012, Johnson was sentenced to 90 days in jail in order to pay a $250 fine after a Jefferson District Court judge found her guilty of a misdemeanor for violating a city ordinance by failing to restrain a dangerous dog. A um, bunch of weird shit. So basically, there's uh, two things here. There was a, um, a, you know, there's a law in some town or in some city that they change. You know, Newport, if you spit on the sidewalk, that's a misdemeanor. If you're in Newport, Kentucky, and you spit on the sidewalk, that's a misdemeanor. You're going to get ticketed for that. And Fort Thomas selling dyed chicks or rabbits is a misdemeanor. So if you dye your rabbits or if you dye some chicks, that's a, that's a misdemeanor. So you have to know each and every law in every municipality. There's private pocket tyrannies. There's people in every piece of this state that is doing their own thing. We don't have a constitution. We don't have a basic set of rules that we all live by. And... Um, and that's a damn shame. That's an absolute damn shame. It's all about power and money and, you know, about fucking over the oppressed. It's about fucking over the oppressed, maintaining slavery. And it's bullshit, you lying motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, GDP is going up in Kentucky to $186 billion dollars. Which makes us like the top 75th economy in the world. But we can learn from the top 74 economies. Here's uh, some of the industries in Kentucky. The top manufacturers, service and technology companies by employment. UPS has 12,000 employees. Toyota has 12,000. Humana, 11,000. Ford Motor Company, 8,000. General Electric, 7,000. Amazon, 6,800. FMR, LLC. I'm not sure what FMR is. Xerox Corporation, Hitachi, and Berkshire Hathaway. 
which is Warren Buffett's company, which is amazing. 3,000 people work under Warren Buffett. The manufacturing employment, the total manufacturing, which is way bigger than coal, manufacturing is bigger than coal, car dealerships is bigger than coal, even biotechnology is bigger than coal. Coal is like a dying industry and it gets smaller and smaller and even the Mitch McConnell fucking dickholes who want to sit there and say, coal, 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 you know, it was put in the ground so we can burn it. Oh yeah, but not marijuana, right? Um, Mayor Fisher said some shit. Oh, I understand economics. That's why we're not going to raise minimum wage. Well, if you understand economics and you understand by making something illegal, you increase the profit incentive and therefore you're actually contributing to the uh, increase. You know, you can make a ton of money. If it's illegal, Cuban cigars, you can make a ton of money off of the Cuban cigars. We're making Al Capones every day. So transportation equipment, motor vehicle parts, machinery, appliances, food, fabricated metals. Paper and printing, petrol, coal, motor vehicles, primary products, wood products, computer electronic products. The whole bunch of shit's being made with the manufacturing base. So, <laughs> a, lot of them, a lot of jobs. That's a lot of jobs. And, um, you know, yeah, you got to make sure the company makes money, but we also need to make sure that the workers are being protected. And uh, we're not doing that. We don't have solidarity. We don't have unions. And we're not, um, you know, we're not, we're not treating each other People loving people. That's what we need. People loving people. And that's it. The world's happiest country's lifestyle, real estate, Gallup table. Um, happiest country in the world, Denmark. 80% tax rate. Finland, Norway, Sweden, Netherlands. Costa Rica, which is actually, someone was making fun of Costa Rica, I guess, being poor or something. But it's one of the happiest country, the sixth happiest country in the world. They have people who love people there. You know, the happiest country in the Americas that beat out richer countries like U.S. It's because social networks in Costa Rica are tight, allowing individuals to feel happy with their lot regardless of financial success. Costa Rica ranks really high on social and psychology. Prosperity says harder. It's probably things systemic to the society that make people over time develop better relationships and put more value on relationships. Daily positive feelings rank really high there. Inhabitants of some rich countries are bound to feel happier, but happiness is elusive to define and money isn't the only thing that influences it. Harder explains that the more abstract sense of happiness to which wealth contributes has a different effect on one's life than daily happiness. Each of us is two different people. We evaluate our lives periodically. We sit back and reflect and summarize things that have gone on in our lives to date. Another side is how you experience things daily. Daily experience affects your stress and your psychology. How you evaluate your life affects your decisions. It's important to think about how you can leverage that well-being. Um, that being said, actually, uh, there's a couple. I, mean, I feel like I'm evolving a million times a minute. And there's uh, somebody was mentioned. Um, they had mentioned about how people think, and they were sitting there saying that you know everybody has thoughts throughout the day, some negative, some positive, and they would say probably about 50-50, right? And so if you got some negative and some positive, well, what you got to do is you got to you know when you start to feel some negative thoughts, you got to say, well, why am I thinking this? What's behind it? And then either, you know, deal with it, what can I do about it, or let it go, you know, and think, think happy. Just be happy. If you want to be happy, just be happy. <laughs> and that's, that's uh, that, that kind of blew my mind a little bit because, you know, when you think about all the thoughts that a person has throughout the day, and if you try to quantify them as positive versus negative, you know, that's, there's something to that. Um, let's see, there's a couple other thoughts that actually kind of blew my mind, but, um, Drawing a blank here. I want to talk a little bit about William Glasser, and then I'll talk about the happiest countries, and then we'll call it a night. <laughs> uh, but William Glasser, he had said that the, um, um, you know, he says a lot of things, but essentially he says that, you know, everybody wants to have fun, everyone wants to be happy, everyone wants power. And um, the thing about everybody wanting power and everybody wanting to, in, in, you know, make their, you know, get a bigger piece of the pie is there only one pot. And since there's only one pie, you can't have one person with all the power and nobody else. You have to share power. we got to learn how to share power. So William Glasser kind of is a mixture of Nietzsche and develops that into working relationships and working schools. He wants uh, quality schools. He wants, you know, quality teachers. He believes in choice theory. He is actually the one who says that the reason for mental illness is because people cannot communicate with those that they love. That's the basis. There is no such thing as mental illness. But we cannot communicate with the people that we love, and therefore, there, you know, there's a breakdown. And that breakdown is what is perceived as insanity. And that's, that's you know, I think that's, that's revolutionary. That's absolutely incredible. 
There was, um, I mean, there's just so much crazy shit. Um, I was uh, talking to a, a woman, and she was like, you know, when I talked about abortion, she flipped the fuck out. But then I mentioned that this a Saudi Arabian woman got shot in the head. And uh, she's saying that she was innocent. And then I also talked about this five-year-old kid that killed herself. Um, and, you know, she, she took a jump rope and tied it and wrote it in purple marker. She says, you know, I was never good enough, and she killed herself. Well, why would a, a six-year-old or five-year-old girl kill herself? Why would a Saudi Arabian country kill, you know, a woman who was not, you know, guilty of the crime? The Supposedly, she had killed her husband's kid, and her husband's kid was uh, beaten and raped with a broomstick. Does that sound like something a woman would do? Yeah, people don't want to think about this type of stuff, but it's, you know, the same woman would flip the fuck out about abortion, but she did not give a shit about those incidents. She did not care about those incidents. She didn't give a shit. And it made me wonder, like, why why is abortion a big fucking deal to her if she says she's pro-life? Oh, how dare you? No, abortion, blah, blah, blah. But then um, when you say, you know, killing uh, an adult woman or a child killing them, so that, that didn't, she didn't, you know, lose no sleep over that, didn't even blink an eye to that. Well, what is that about? I think the abortion thing is how you control your kids. You can control your kids' sex lives. You can control your kids' everything. And, uh, hey, you have sex, you're going to have the baby and fuck you. You know? And I think that's the exact opposite approach. You want to have, you know, you want you want responsible, um, you know, people. If you're going to have sex, you want them to be responsible about it. And you don't want kids having babies. You don't want... You know, if someone, the Bible says if you're raped, you got to marry your rapist. Um, the Quran says you got to be submissive in sexual um, encounters. And um, and I think that's just absolutely sickening. That's just, um, it's, it's disgusting because, you know, it's uh, with the William Glasser's choice theory, he says that how you have fun or how you enjoy is that you, t you don't put power over on others. And you have fun. You, you don't try to put, you know, you don't try to dominate, you don't try to manipulate, you don't try to exploit, and you have fun. And because we all have a will to power, we need to recognize that and stop manipulating me. Stop manipulating me. Stop controlling me. I won't control you. You won't control me. I've been against power for a long ass time, but I'm starting to, you know, I have to have power for myself. People will be bullies and continue to be bullies and think that they're good fucking people. And they'll laugh about being bullies um, when really that's, you know, that that was, um, it, it would piss me off because it's like, damn, I'm nice. I'm smiling. I'm, you know. Um, being conversational and fun, and now you're being a dick, and um, and I would you know kind of run away from that conflict, and so I think I you know everybody has to have power for themselves enough to be able to stand up for themselves. Power usually means to control other people, but if you have power for yourself, that's really what what matters the most is you have power for yourself. You should keep you know nobody ever told me this, but you should keep your head up, you should keep your shoulders up, you should be proud of yourself, maintain dignity. And, um, and love yourself. You're going to be your own best ally. And if you can't love yourself, Frederick Douglass told me the same thing. He says, you know, who would want to help somebody up if they're just going to fall right back down again? You got to have power for yourself. And actually, when you politely submit to an order or to a person, that would be the level of injustice that is perpetuated upon you. And so that's, uh, I, I mean, I, I think that just fucking rings so true. It just rings so true. There's, um, I remember a Bellevue police officer um, when I was just 19 years old thinking cops are good fucking people and um, I'm walking to my house and I'm walking in the alley and I had a thing of laundry and it's about midnight and uh, he flashed his lights at me and I was like well shit I'll just go tell him that everything's okay but when I went to go tell him the, you know I said I'm, I'm a little nervous right now because I mean I don't know who you are and why you're flashing your lights at me I haven't done anything wrong I'm just walking to my house and he goes, what? You're nervous? You're scared? Let me see. And he started bullying me through my laundry everywhere. Fucking ramshackled my fucking apartment. Was just a total fucking dick. He didn't He didn't go after me because I was doing anything wrong. He didn't go after me because I was a criminal or that I hurt anybody. He went after me because I submitted politely to him. And, um, and when you submit politely to people, that will be the level of injustice that is perpetuated upon you. And so, you know, I think we have to, be, we have to recognize this. You know, as uh, people, as a society, and for our relationships. If you're trying to manipulate and control somebody, and then you accuse them of this or that, and you don't give a shit, then that's um, that's gonna there's gonna that's gonna open up a whole world of problems. You're abusive, and you're a bully, and you're gonna laugh about it because you want all the power, and you don't want anybody else to have the power. But if nobody tells you that you're doing wrong, especially the person that you're oppressing, they need power for themselves to tell you to fuck off. And I think that's totally appropriate. Um, hey, pick up that pencil. Yeah, fuck off. 
No, I'm not going to do that. In fact, you know, get out of my head. Quit buzzing in my fucking ear, sitting there bossing me around like I'm just supposed to be your... That sucks. That's abusive. That's harassment. You know, when um, I had to go around getting signatures for Children's Health Care, I had to convince people to do what I wanted them to do. I couldn't have been like, hey, you better fucking sign this or else. You know, I don't I don't need to fucking go around bullying people like that. I think that's... I hate bullies. I cannot stand them. Uh, I like, the, you know, the, a good product or whatever should be able to sell itself. When I sold sweet corn... I didn't try to sell it, you know, I didn't try to push it, it sold itself, and I think that's exactly how it should be, that's exactly what we should be doing, you know, instead of pushing it on people, people, if they want it, then they'll do it, if they don't want to do it, then they don't want to do it, so, you know, when I was uh, going and getting my petition signed, I was giving people the opportunity to sign it, if they didn't want to do it, I'd say thank you and I'd move on, and I would give people three, you know, opportunities in order to agree or to disagree, so, Costa Rica, New Zealand, Canada, Israel, Austria, or Australia, Switzerland, ba Panama, Brazil, U.S., Austria, Belgium, U.K., Mexico, Turkmenistan, United Arab Emirates. These are all happy, happy countries. And um, and really, you know, the wealth of the country and the happiness, there is a correlation, but it's not 100%. Costa Rica is kicking ass, and they're not, they're not a rich country. So I think for our happiness, we should check out what Costa Rica is doing. Denmark's the happiest country in the world. They got socialism and they got capitalism. So we need to, you know, in the great pool of ideas, the best ideas should prevail. And um, we need to we need to start acting smarter, start acting better, value intelligence, value logic, science, and reason, and get your head out of your fucking religious ass. You stupid ass fucking racist, religious, dumb motherfuckers.